Assalamualaikum and very good evening to all of you. Welcome back to our class, the BAA 2213, the Reinforced Concrete Design 1. For this week, we will uh, we still in topic number two, which is the analysis of sections. And for this week, we will focus on the analysis of flange beam. Here is the learning outcomes from this subtopic, which is the first one is the students must be able to understand the definition of the flange beam. The second one is students must be able to determine the effective width of the flange. And the third one is students must be able to understand the differences between various types of flange beam. As an introduction, the flange beams is considered when the reinforced concrete slabs are cast integrally or monolithically with the supporting beams. The slabs, okay, the, co uh, the concrete from the slabs may contribute to the compre compressive strength of the beams during the flexure. We have two types of uh, flange beam, which is the T-beam and the L-beam. As you can see in figure 1 and figure 2, this is the steel reinforcement which had been set up for the slab and for the beam for upper floor level uh, alongside with the spacer and the formwork. Okay, this condition means that the slab and the beam is ready to be concreted monolithically. Okay, here is the position of the L beam, which is located at the edge of the building or the perimeter of the building. And the T beam is considered when the beam supporting two panels of the slab or, it, or the beam is located at the middle of the building. Okay, here is the definition. The HF is the thickness of the slab. The B effective is the effective flange width. The B, BW is the width of the beam. H is the depth of the beam. And D is the distance from the surface, top surface of the beam to the center of the uh, main reinforcement. Okay. This is how to determine the effective width of the flange by referring to class 4.3.2.1 it can be determined uh, based on the positions of the uh, sections which is uh, strongly uh, based on the distance of zero moments okay where the zero moments is expected to occur here 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 and here so the l naught is the depend on the position of the zero moment. Okay, and this is, this is the formula, okay. Uh, equation 5.7 in Eurocode 2 is the formula on how to determine the effective flange, okay, the, the width of effective flange, either for T beam or L beam, which is the summation of B effective for uh, flange number one. Let's say this is the slab number one. And this is slab, uh, this one is uh, slab number two. So the uh, effective, uh, the width of flange for from slab number one plus the width of the beam and plus the effective okay, uh, width of flange from slab number two. So the total up width will uh, produce the effective flange width for the whole beam. Okay, and this is how to get the effective uh, flange width from slab number one and slab number two. And for simply supported beam, as I mentioned before, this is the zero moment will occur at the support. So the L naught is equal to L. And for continuous beam, we have to refer for this figure, which is figure 5.2 where the positions of the uh, zero moment is located here, 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 and here. Okay. And so this is the 
bending moment diagram for this beam. As I mentioned before, this is the position of zero moment. Okay, and the point of zero moment is uh, from one point to one point is uh, known as the, the L0, and this is uh, how to derive the value of L0. So if the uh, section is located here, the tensions will occur at the bottom part of the beam while the compression will occur at the top part. And if the section is located near the joint, the compression, uh, the tension will occur at the top part while the compression will occur at the bottom part of the beam. And this is the design of flange beam is uh, strongly depends on the location of the neutral axis. If the neutral axis is within the flange, we can design the beam as a rectangular sections. So either, either a singly or doubly, but the procedure is we just design based on the rectangular sections like this one. Okay. Just consider the width of the beam itself. So this part and this part uh, is not uh, contribute to cater for the compressions. However, if the neutral axis is located below the flange, we can design the beam as flange sections, either singly or doubly. And uh, we have to consider the concrete here from the slab to contribute uh, in uh, resisting the compressions. Okay, and here is the stress block analysis for flange beam. There are three cases that has to be considered. The first one is the neutral axis in the flange where the moment resistance design is uh, lesser than the MF. So this is, uh, we can see that the neutral axis is located here, which is uh, inside the flange. So, uh, the sections can be designed as uh, rectangular sections because the non-rectangular sections below the neutral axis is in tension and it is therefore considered as inactive. Okay, so we can derive the moment of resistance about the uh, center of the concrete as these equations and then we multiply the we, we can assume the S equal to 0.8x, which is similar to the HF, which is the thickness of the slab. So we consider this one as the 0.8x, and we can obtain these equations. So by using this equation, we can determine the value of ultimate moment resistance of flange. And then uh, this is the MED is the MSD is the uh, design bending moment. Okay, design, which design uh, bending moment, which is the bending moment, which is the bending moment obtained due to the due to the loading. So we can uh, compare if the value of uh, MED is lesser than less lesser or equal to MF. So the neutral axis is lies in the flange. So we can uh, design the beam strictly as uh, rectangular sections. If the MED is larger than the MF, so the, the, the neutral axis is lies below the flange and we can design the beam based on, uh, by considering the flange, which is uh, either T or the L beam. Okay, and here is the derivations of the equations. As we learned during the rectangular sections, okay, we have to consider, so the, this, this area is the compressions. Okay, and then this, uh, the, the contribution of steel bar here is for tensions. Okay, the forces of tensions is here, here this one, F, S, T must be equal to F, this was the FC1. FC, FCC1 is the forces of, uh, forces of con, uh, compressions, of for forces uh, experienced by the concrete due to compressions. One is this one, okay, the area or the region number one. 
and then the plus FCC2, which is the forces experienced by the concrete due to compressions. Okay, uh, at from region number two, which is at the left and at the right side of the beam, which is originally from the uh, slab. So you can derive this one. Okay, this is the. Okay, we take the bending moment and then we uh, just uh, substitute the value, and then we can obtain the the M bell. M M balance is by this one. So if the M is uh, the moment, the bending moment is lesser than M balance. The compression re reinforcement is not required. So we can. Uh, we can uh, design the beam, which is the flange. It is still the flange beam by considering the single reinforcement only, okay, singly uh, reinforcement. But however, if the M is greater than M balance, the compression reinforcement is required within the, within the flange beam. So we can design this one. This is the S. Okay, here is the AS, and then we all we we need the the AS prime here. So this is uh, how to determine the area of steel required. Okay, in the intention uh, region, and this is the for 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 double reinforce. Okay, this one is for singly reinforce. Singly reinforce. How to determine the area of steel? Here we can use these equations and how to determine the area of steel for compression reinforcement S prime. We use this equation and to determine the area of tension uh, reinforcement required, we can use these equations. This one is for for doubly reinforced flange sections. Okay, we can derive the equation. Okay, we can see here that this is the Okay, we have FST equal to FCC1 plus FCC2 plus the FSC, which is uh, forces by the steel to come uh, to cater for for compressions. Okay, so this is the procedure for plunge uh, plunge sections. First of all, we calculate the value of MF by using these equations. And then we check either the MF is uh, greater or if the MF is greater or equal to MED, the design moment. So the natural axis is in the flange and we can design the beam by uh, based on the rectangular section procedure. However, if the uh, MED is greater than the MF, means that the natural axis lies below the flange and we can calculate the M balance. By using this equation where the beta f is equal to this one, if the MED is uh, lesser than M balance, it is the singly reinforced, and then we can uh, calculate the uh, value of uh, area, the, the total area of steel reinforcement required based on these equations. And if the MED is greater than M balance, so the the situation is we need uh, compression uh, uh, reinforcement, which is the doubly reinforced beam. We need the AS prime and the, the AS based on these equations. So as an example, you can refer to example 1.4 in page, number, page 40, example 1.5 in page 42, and example 1.6 in page 43. Okay, you can refer the uh, teaching module book for all these examples. And uh, here is the problem. Problem number one, we have to calculate the effective flange width for beam located at 12 stroke A to C, which is uh, this beam, okay, 12. Okay, this is the beam for number one. We have to, you have to call, uh, Calculate the effective beam width. This is for beam number one. And beam number two is A1 stroke 11A to 12. Okay, where is 11A? 11A is located here. 
A1 is here. This one, okay, this one. Okay, A1 stroke give me A to 12. So this one, okay, this is this is uh for number two. Okay, you can uh you please solve this uh problem so we can discuss during our tutorial class. And this is the problem number two, where the natural axis is in the flange, and you have to design the main reinforcement for this beam. Okay, just follow the procedure I showed to you before, okay, where the the neutral axis is in the flange, okay, either singly or doubly, you have to determine, and then you can use this, this equation, either this equation or these two equations. Okay, and for problem number three is, uh, sorry, okay, okay, neutral axis is in flange, so you have to refer uh, for these equations. Uh, okay, so you have to refer uh, how to, how to determine the area of steel for rectangular sections. Okay, for example, uh, problem number three, neutral axis is below, below the flange. You have to design the main reinforcement for this beam. So you have to determine either it is uh, singly or doubly. Okay, and then you can design either it only AS or either it's AS prime. And also you need the AS. Okay, and this is for the tutorial. You have to refer page seventy nine for the from the design module. Okay, uh, we can discuss uh, the tutorial later in our class. Thank you very much for your uh, attentions. See you soon, and I hope you can uh, try. Okay, you can try yourself on how to derive this equation. Okay, how to derive this. Uh, this one eh, from the stress block. Okay, this one, how to derive MF. Okay, how to derive MF. I hope you can uh, try by yourself. And also this one, okay, how to get the M here. You have to derive by, by yourself. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. See you in uh, our tutorial class soon. Assalamualaikum and very, and goodbye.